Hello, and welcome to Point and Shoot, where we try to help you be a better photographer. I'm Susan Hagstrom, and today I'm joined by local photographer Mary Ellen Jones. Hello. Mary Ellen, hello, welcome. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Mary Ellen Thanks. is the owner of MJ Design Studio right here in Hingham, and uh, she's going to tell us today about her business. So Mary Ellen, how did you first get started in photography? Um, well, photography always was a hobby and an interest and a love um, that I only dreamt that I could become a, a career. Um, it actually started following my boys. I have four sons. I couldn't coach them. They played hockey, they played football, they played basketball. Uh, my husband could coach that way. I could take pictures. So um, as they grew, so did my photography and the interest as the people um, saw some of my um, photographs. Um, the interest in wanting me to do more came my way and that helped explore that maybe something I always thought I could do, I could, I really could do. Sure. And then I changed and turned it into a business. So you were on the sidelines mm -hmm. and then you turned that into a real career. Mm -hmm. Was your training then formal training or was it just hands-on? Uh, most of it was hands-on. Um, I was learning from fellow photographers like yourself, mm -hmm. you know, so if you think, um, Mark Brody, um, who's also part of this, uh, you know, learned if I was photographing at a game and a newspaper photographer was there, um, we would talk and, you know, to pique my interest and see what they were doing. You know, I think that's probably one of the best training is sharing each other's knowledge, you know. Sure. Um, at that point, though, I did go back to school um, before I wanted to make sure there was some sort of formal training before I started to sell my, my photography, uh, my photographs. And um, I have, I went and got, a, I was in the process of getting a graduate certificate in graphic design and I focused mostly on photography within that um, degree. Mm -hmm. um, and incorporated sort of the two of them um, in my work a little bit more. But really I would say the best training I've had has been from fellow photographers. Yeah, so that graphic part uh, leads me into my next question. Mm -hmm. You have a background in graphic design as well as photography. Right. How do those two things marry together? In, in many ways, you know, um, one way is um, the way I look at um, my what I'm going to shoot. You know, if um, if I am, I, I'm always if I'm shooting for a publication, for example, you know, um, I may see the half page ad that I have to get in my head, you know, as opposed to just the subject I want to shoot and want to leave room for some copy and um, that way. Um, but if I'm photographing for, my mind sort of works that way, if I'm photographing a portrait or whatever, I won't just look at the subject, I'll be thinking of an 8x10 or, you know, which way that, that. so that, that helps. Um, it helps with my clients. A lot of them like one-stop shopping. I can prove, you know, a lot of my senior portraits turn into graduation invitations. Yeah. A lot of my family portraits turn into Christmas cards or holiday cards. Uh, um, it's, you know, uh, designing albums for weddings um, or even a sports um, season for a high school athlete. I do a lot of um, albums that way, so it, th I think a lot of my, my clients like that. You know, they can just, it's not just buying a 5 by 7 print, it's turning it into a book of memories. Mm -hmm. you now know. you mentioned senior portraits, I know you do a very wide variety of things. Mm -hmm. You've done sports, uh, I think you said you started sports with your sons, mm -hmm. so you've done sports photography, you do portrait work, you do landscapes, you do things for realtors. How did you... Uh, focus, how did you focus your business and decide what you were going to sort of focus on and then what do you consider to be your sort of specialties now? Um, I would definitely say it's senior portraits right now. Um, lots of times I sort of decide to focus on where um, the need or is, you know, where the interest <coughs> is in my work. Um, I love working with teenagers, you know. Um, I think a high school senior um, is so excited to go on to their next chapter. You know, I love spending time with them doing that. I don't like to just spend 15, 20 minutes with them and do, you know, and photograph a quick shoot unless that's what they want. You know, I, I think it's a really big accomplishment to get a high school senior to trust you enough to let their personality come through in one of your photographs. And um, when I do accomplish that, it 
I right. really, I feels really good. So right. um, they're probably, I love working with all kinds of portraits, but I do think that that's sort of my favorite um, medium, my, maybe my favorite audience. Right. Now, in addition to doing all those different types of photography, when you own your own business, you have to also mm -hmm. do a wide variety of other things. You have to market yourself, right. you package things, you deliver things. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite part of your business? Definitely meaning with, you know, shooting with the clients. Um, this time of the year, especially, my husband keeps on reminding me about tax season coming up. <laughs> that part is my least favorite, um, but it's a necessity, you know. Right. Um, you know, again, it just, you know, what we do, there's so many facets of it, you know, whether I do, I design my website, I, all, you know, there's a lot that goes in there, but then when you sit back and you're out there actually shooting and seeing what comes back, that's what keeps me okay. The, the necessary administrative end makes that part worthwhile. Sure. You know? Now when you talk about being out there shooting, uh, if you're into photography, you're into gear. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the gear that you use. I'm a Nikon person, always have been. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know why, it's just I think it finds, don't you think, like, you know, once you're just used to sure. particular um, camera, I um, shoot, you know, right now I just, um, of a new camera that I shoot with a Nikon D4 mostly, um, or a D700. Okay. Um, I, you know, my out, when I'm out on location, um, my diffuser is probably one of my most important, other than my camera. Um, How do you my use light, that? My light monitor. Um, I usually, depending on the, the situation and depending on the shoot, I'll have an assistant with me and just, you know, soften the light, you know, and to, um, to help direct, you know, um, the light for the um, less editing and the sure. other end just to get it right on the first end. Mm -hmm. So um, even more so than the reflector, you know, depending on obviously your light of whether I need some more fill or not, but I just, um, that diffuser is sort of my my staple. Okay. You Do know. you have any go-to lenses, things you, uh, lenses um, you really prefer to use with put your portraits? The 7200 is my go-to lens um, for most of my portraits. Okay. I would say about 90%, 95%. If I'm inside studio, I would also go sometimes to my 85 fixed um, lens. Um, but then, of course, if I'm with a larger crowd, then it might go back to a 24, my 2470. I would say those are the three. Um, Go to lenses. lenses. Okay, and then uh, how about post production? Because that's a big part of your work too. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get home, <clears throat> what kind of computer and software do you use? Um, I'm a Mac. I am, a, you know, Mac person. My um, iMac, and I basically live with the, within the Adobe suite. You know. Okay. I um, start off in Lightroom. I do most of my work in my proofing work in Lightroom. I will. I actually manage my website through Lightroom as far as um, being able to now publish directly um, and different proofs right up into my galleries, my proofing galleries to my clients um, through there. So that, you know, is sort of the staple of the first stop, this first stop. Um, then, you know, once it gets into my final edits, I probably will do fine, much more fine tuning editing and move that into with Photoshop. Okay. So those two, you know, and then if I'm working on design and there's Illustrator in design. So really, basically, you know, that's more my graphic end. Okay. So we've heard about the gear that you use, but everyone in photography knows there's always something on your wish list. Mm -hmm. Anything you really uh, got your eye on? Right now, I think, you know, I definitely want to explore more into studio work. So I would say more, you know, get more creative lighting, you know, whether it's more different kind of filters, you know, that type of thing. Um, and basically, even before I get more equipment, <laughs> I want to really explore more how, obviously, it's, I know how to use my equipment, but I also know that there's so much more I could be doing with my equipment. Great. And I think that's probably my, on my first wish list, is to really maximize what I have Good. Um, to its full potential. Well, we'll be keeping our eye on what's in store for MJ Design in the future and Mary Ellen Jones, but stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some of Mary Ellen's work. Hello, and welcome back to Point and Shoot. We're here today with our guest, Mary Ellen Jones, from MJ Design Studio right here in Hingham. 
Uh, she's been talking to us about some of her photography, and now we're going to take a look at the goods. Mm -hmm. Mary Ellen's told us that she's interested in portraits, so what can you tell us about this portrait? It looks like it was outside in some natural light. Yeah, this is one of my favorite senior portraits of this past season, class of 2014. Um, the, one, the one question I get all the time with portraits is, other than what should I wear, where should we go? And I always tell everybody that it's more important that your um, model is comfortable wh where they are. This is in um, Emily's backyard. We were supposed to go down to the harbor. It was a windy, windy day. I knew that it wouldn't match, so we were just went in her backyard so she was comfortable um, with it. Um, and because by the time we got to her backyard, it was getting dark and dust, so there was a lot of um, more flash there than I usually would use. Um, a little bit more full flash in the ba um, also for the background a little bit. Um, I looked to see what she was wearing. I saw a little bit of wildflowers in the back, and that gave me just enough color. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Let's take another look. I know you do a lot of senior portraits. Here's another one. Now this is uh, totally different from the first one. How would mm. you compare this one to the last one that we saw? Oh, the big one about this one is the um, is difference between summer light and winter light. You know, um, this was only taken about three weeks ago. Uh, a little more. Um, so instead, she had um, requested first we would go to lo one location shot. You know, although it was in winter. Um, which is pretty rare. We usually, I usually don't get a lot of senior portrait requests this time of the year unless it's a studio in the studio. So instead of going to the typical beach or, you know, um, field, woods, whatever, um, I found my friend's barn. And we were amongst, found the right lighting in the back of the day. This was just very simple, her and I, lighting, the right background, um, not, not an assistant, no, Nothing, just the, just us, and um, and just her relaxing and pretending that we weren't freezing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this can be, and just having fun, right. just having fun. She looks very relaxed. She Here's was. another one, uh, different time of year again. Uh, was this very in the, very uh, hot summertime? Very very hot summer day up at the South Shore Country Club. Um, I, I think the biggest, um, you know, very 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 hot. So we definitely, um, I did use the. Um, white reflector to help um, manage um, the light a little bit. But also um, the biggest thing with, um, with Thomas is that he, you know, was, was smiling a lot, relaxing a lot. We were having so much fun. I almost had to calm him down just mm -hmm. a little bit so we could look up. And my favorite thing to go with guys, so the things to keep their eyes open is to go above them. So having him sit under the tree not only would cl um, clean him uh, cool him down a little bit, excuse me, but also force those blue eyes. He had great blue eyes looking up at me. Looks um, great with the shirt, compliments. Exactly. Let's take another look. Here's another one. Uh, <laughs> nice background. Uh, where was this taken? This is at Sandy Beach um, in Cohasset. Uh, a, one probably one of the favorite places for n about 90 percent of people request to go there. Uh, one thing about this particular senior, um, he has a lot of personality, um, so it was fun to go there. There was a lot of different vantage points for him. Um, we, you know, so what I try to do is capture. So again, they cannot. They're only going to really pick obviously for the yearbook or the ho um, home, or, or actually they got an album for the different ones. I try to capture the different areas. Through, um, or different settings within the one location. Mm -hmm. and see, um, this beach gives you a lot. And he, again, just trusted me enough to just to sit and relax and just gave me the look like, you know, here I am. Yeah, looks very and, natural. Um, exactly. Do you recommend a certain time of day to take portraits? Um, I try my best, obviously, um, late evening when it's a little softer sun or early morning. Um, I love the seniors that will get up in the morning. Um, so try to avoid the them. middle of the day? The midday is um, definitely not what I, sometimes you can't help it based on schedules and I will always have somebody with me uh, during those t um, times um, or incorporate maybe, you know, a mother or someone with, the, you know, a friend, you know, as far as to help manipulate some lighting a little bit, but mm -hmm. definitely more um, five, six, seven o'clock at night, depending on the time of the year. Good to My know. favorite. So most of those seniors want outside shots on 97 percent. Okay. Let's take another look at uh, some more portraits. 
I'm going into our group shots here. Um, working with little children, another whole dynamic whatsoever um, all together. And um, these kids were having just a ball. And I, I really feel sorry when I see people just say, OK, now we have to stop. We have to, you know, you have to stop. You have to pose, whatever. Just we're supposed to capture who they are now. Um, that's the biggest thing. So you know, 10 years from now, you'll remember that day or whatever. So I like to let, just let them go. And sometimes I almost look uh, photographing kids as the same as I do sports. As you know, I just go on high speed and just and some t kneel down with them, um, do as you know, get into the moment with them, and hopefully capture a nice natural moment like that. And uh, so you obviously uh, help compose the picture. Do you help them with their clothing? <clears throat> um, you give I them will advice? suggest. You know, um, I you know I. Again, I, I don't want the clothing to be taken away from them. Uh, I, I'll s I always start off that they have to buy into it, especially little kids. They have to be comfortable. If all they will wear is sweatpants, <laughs> I would rather have them wear sweatpants and be happy in the photo than be forced to wear an outfit that they're just miserable in and then be unhappy. You know, the whole session is gone. Um, the big thing I'd like to, you know, keep away from anything distracting from their face. You so know, keep it things, simple. So keep it simple. You know, it doesn't always have to be matchy-matchy. You know, right. that particular one was, but it worked, you know, because we were just in the natural greens and stuff. But coordinating, you know, right. not fighting one another. Right. Let's take a look at some more group shots. And there's this another This is a nice one. one. Here's a family portrait. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how did you manage this one? Again, the lighting was great. It was um, early evenings at World's End. Um, so it was a very soft, soft, soft light. Um, I did have um, an assistant with me to sort of help, uh, you know, I went a little more back, backlit them a little bit so the sun was a little bit behind them, but to help balance off the um, half of the group. And, and here we were working with a lot of personalities. Um, I let the, you know, let the little girl be the little girl, not to worry. And the first thing I always tell all families especially is remind them that I'm from a large family too. <laughs> so nothing that anyone's going to say is going to surprise me. It's okay. All right. um, and I also like to tell families, well, remember we're doing one family, so it's important that you're all together as a unit. And that's what we want the picture to be. We don't want holes in between each of them. Sure. You know, I want them sort of composed together. Right. So I usually, I find a spot where I can do that and then I'll put them all in one by one and then sort of fill in where a hole may be. And many a times we'll switch around <laughs> <laughs> until we get the one we like. But All right, let's take so. another look. at a, Here's a group. Uh, was this for a wedding? This was for a wedding. Um, the gentleman in the front, right there in the uh, middle, was getting married about 15 minutes from this portrait, <laughs> right on the beach, right behind um, those um, rowboats. Um, it was a storm was coming in. Um, everyone was in a good mood, hoping that the wedding was going to take place before the storm came. So I, I, it was, you know, we were sort of a grayish day, and the ties had so much color. The contrast of it was great. So I was able to, you know, I saw the rowboats, and I thought this would relax them, get them all together. It was a fun shot to get in, but it also, because we could gather, I could almost put them without them realizing it in sort of the shape of another bo boat, if you look, you know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. sort of the, the triangular part that way. It was sort of composed. And, and so the, without the background being too much of the photo, it sort of comp it's a nice you know, compliment, comp right. complements it. OK. And uh, how about, let's take a look at some studio shots. Those, those were all uh, on location shots. So. Uh, I'm going to take a look at some studio. Now, this is obviously something you've set up. Uh, I would imagine there's some pluses and minuses. On the plus side, you've got to control, you get to control all, all the elements. You don't exactly. have to worry about wind or shadows or that kind of thing. So how do you set this up? Um, well, right here, this is just, again, not knowing when they were coming. This, this actually was a group with six kids. These mm. were six cousins that came. Um, and this was just, you know, a little mini um, shot within that. I got my, um, just so I went simple with the background, you know, just so they could play white background and had d the different props with the, um, with my, the stools that put the color in that way. Uh, I had um, a couple of soft boxes. Okay. Um, and controlled the lights um, basically through Radio Slave on my camera. So, um, you know, again, moving around. 
uh, the challenge of it, especially with a young child uh, group like that, and again, there were six of them, these were the older kids, they went down to two years old, was because they couldn't run as much as they wanted to. Right. Do you know what I mean? So the challenge of them being inside the studio um, Let's got take one. A, a quick look. I think we have one more uh, nice studio shot. That's a great mm -hmm. shot. And so that's, that's kind of the thing that you uh, would like to do more of? Exactly. Um, I want, you know, I want to manipulate, get a little more creative with lighting in the studio. 90% of my work is location. So this, to me, is the next phase that I can grow in with. And um, I, I had a great time with this model the other day. Okay. Um, well, that's good. It's, uh, it's great to see the difference between the on location and the mm -hmm. studio shot. There's a lot that goes into uh, to both settings, and I suppose it's great to be able to do both and not, not get bored with one or the other. Well, we've been here chatting with Mary Ellen Jones of MJ Design Studio right here in Hingham. Got to see some of her work, and uh, stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to give you some tips to compose and take your own portraits. Hi, and welcome back to Point and Shoot. We're going to talk to you a little bit about how to compose a good portrait, uh, what's involved in that. The first thing, of course, is having a good portrait lens. If you have a point and shoot camera that has a fixed in lens, you're all set. You don't have to worry about it. One thing you could do is sometimes you might have a portrait setting on your camera. It usually is shown with a, uh, a little head or a, a picture of a person. So if you have a point and shoot camera, and you want to take some portraits, set your setting to that little head and you'll be all set to go. If you have a DSLR that you can change lenses, you probably want to try to find a good portrait lens. What do you want to look for in a good portrait lens? Well, you want to look for stabilization, fast autofocus, a wide open aperture, which means uh, an f of about 1.8 or 2.8. And then, of course, you probably have to think about the price. Uh, we're going to be talking about Canon lenses because that's what I have, but these lenses are made uh, with these same specifications in all the other brands too. So here we have uh, a what's considered a very good, popular, um, reasonably priced portrait lens. It's the Canon 85mm fixed 1.8 lens. Costs about $400, which in the world of uh, photography is pretty reasonable. It's a prime lens, which means it only has one focal length, and that's 85 millimeters. It's not a zoom. You can't zoom in it out. You have to adjust yourself to your subject. But it's a great portrait lens. It's what they consider a classic portrait lens. It's lightweight. It's very good in low light. It's an ideal focal length, even though it's no zoom. It's 85 millimeters, so you don't have to be too close or too far from your subject. And it should give you that nice blurred background. It's very uh, well recommended for a good starter portrait lens. If you want to move up in price from there, it jumps pretty quick. This Canon 70-200 f2.8 is about $1,400. It's a uh, very popular portrait lens. It now has a telephoto, and that uh, will help you. The telephoto compression will de-emphasize some large facial features in some of your subjects. Of course, with this lens, you have the flexibility of the zoom, so you can be changing on the fly. While this lens is more expensive, it's $1,400, if you wanted to go with uh, not quite so wide of an open aperture, this one is 2.8, you could get this same lens, the 70-200, to with a 4.0 aperture, and that's a little less expensive. Now, if you really uh, want to spend some dough and get the best that's out there, you can go up to the Canon 24 to 70 f 2.8. This lens is going to run you about $2,000, but a lot of people will tell you it's worth it. It's a favorite of wedding photographers and professionals because of its quality. It uh, has a great zoom in it. It is great, again, for adjusting on the fly. You don't need to be too concerned about how close you are to your subject because you can use that zoom. So there's some ideas for three great uh, portrait lenses. So now your camera's all ready, you've got your lens, and you're ready to shoot. What are you going to do? How are you going to compose your subject? The classic portrait involves a few things, filling the frame and having a nice soft background. You don't want to have a distracting background. And again, you want to have your f-stop set to 
about 2.8 up to 4.0 to have that nice soft background. We're going to show you some samples about how to compose your shot. One tip, I've got five tips for you. One tip is to position your subject sideways, like you can see here. Uh, positioning them sideways rather than straight on helps to elongate the body, makes it a more flattering shot. Another tip would be to shoot from above. You don't want to be straight on from your subject. It's great to be above your subject. This uh, gets them to lift their chin up to you a little bit. It also helps uh, slim the face and it draws some light that uh, you're always trying to draw light, get that nice catch light in the eyes. And if you're standing above them, it helps to draw that light into the eyes. And you can see that here. These aren't, uh, they don't have their chin down, they have their chin up looking toward you. Following tip would be to uh, give the subject something to do with their hands. A lot of people, uh, you don't want them standing sort of awkwardly with their hands down at their side. So either give them something to do with their hands or position them so that they can lean against something. A tree, here we have our subject on the beach and they have their hands just nicely relaxed, folded in their, uh, in their lap and leaning against a nice beach post there. Another thing you can do is, uh, especially for men or boys, they can put their hands in their pockets or they can cross their arms like they have here. Uh, people feel pretty comfortable with their arms crossed, so that's another something to do rather than just have those hands dangling at the side. Another good tip would be make sure when you're doing your focus that you have the focus on the eyes. You want to have those eyes tack sharp, as they say. Uh, you want to also have the eyes in the upper third of your frame. So here's a good example. We have a uh, shot from the waist up, and you can see those eyes are real sharp, and they're in the top third. In many pictures, if you can at least get those eyes sharp, if the rest of it falls out of focus a little, you'll still be able to use that portrait. I think we have another sample. Here's one where the eyes are sharp, and then as it starts to fall away to the edges of the picture, it gets a little less less sharp. It's a it's a little softer around the edges, but that's okay because we have the eyes sharp. And here again, we have the eyes in the top third, so that's a nicely composed portrait. And finally, one thing sometimes you want to do is really fill that frame with your subject. Get really get in tight, especially with kids. It's nice. It also really helps soften that background. You can see the eyes again are sharp. We have the frame filled with basically the head and shoulders and a nice soft background. And then it, you can go, if you want to try something, go in really, really tight uh, with, your, with your zoom or just stand closer if you have that fixed lens. And really here we've fit, pretty much filled the, the entire frame with our, with our portrait and you can see that that that's, can be a nice effect. So there's five tips for you and uh, some ideas about how to start with your lens. Again, if you're using point and shoot, no problem. Set it to the portrait setting and start taking pictures. Thanks for watching us today. Um, we look forward to seeing you again.